Good evening and welcome to MTV's News Update for today, March 24, 2022. I'm Sandy Ramutar for Stowa Talk Headlines. Captain of the trawler that sank several weeks ago had a fake license. Seven Guyanese engineers currently receiving FPSO training in Singapore. Women in Business Expo returns in person after two years. And in sport, West Indies keep their women's World Cup hopes alive after washout against South Africa. Now for the news details. The findings of the report of the Board of Inquiry's investigation into the marine incident involving a trawler that sank several weeks ago found that the captain had a fake license and the crew was not trained in safety measures. Rihanna Griffith reports. It has been over a month since an investigation was launched for three missing fishermen on board a trawler World Friend 307. The findings of the report were handed over by Director of Maritime Safety, Captain John Flores, on Thursday to Public Works Minister Juan Agil. According to Minister Agil, the team probing the investigation found that the captain of the vessel, Harold Damon, had a fake license. A seaman, Vincent Dazzle, is the only known survivor from the incident. The license that he had, or the license that he used at Noble House, was not one that was issued by Marrell. There is no record at Marrell. As a consequence of this, Minister Agile warned that should any fraudulent activity be discovered, there will be consequences. The report also revealed that Noble House received a call early in the morning. However, the Maritime Administration, Marad, only received a call at an estimated nine hours later. This negligence, Minister Agile explained, delayed the process of sending a team to locate the three men. It was also revealed that the vessel was never inspected by Marad to ensure that all standard operating procedures were met. The remaining findings will be made public in two days. The search for the three men has been suspended. In light of World Tuberculosis Day, Minister of Health Dr. Frank Antony says the fight against TB in Ghana has been challenged by the COVID pandemic coupled with the high prevalence of HIV and chronic non-communicable diseases. More in this report. On March 24, Guyana joins the rest of the world in observing World Tuberculosis Day under the theme Invest to End TB, Save Lives. Minister of Health Dr. Frank Anthony in his statement emphasized that the world is running out of time to act on commitments to end tuberculosis. This year's observance is geared at reminding global leaders that there is an urgent need to invest resources to accelerate the fight against tuberculosis, he stated. Locally, the cases of TB have declined with 500 active cases in Guyana. However, it still remains a challenge. The health minister said one of the critical challenges in TB control in Guyana is the HIV epidemic within the population. Although strong collaboration between the TB and HIV programs has led to a decline in TB-HIV co-infection rates, HIV remains one of the biggest concerns and underlying causes of TB morbidity and mortality, he expressed. Other challenges include the high prevalence of chronic non-communicable diseases such as diabetes, high substance misuse among TB patients, and the access to services by isolated hinterland communities. This problem was further compounded by the COVID-19 pandemic, which had disrupted medical services. In Guyana, um, as you know, with the, with the surge of COVID, uh, we would see persons with, um, who would have active TB also can get infected with COVID. And that can be a challenge in terms of how they are managed. According to the health minister, despite the pandemic, the ministry's TB treatment and care sites remained open. So um, we have kept our services open, basically all our clinics and so forth, so people requiring service. However, Dr. Anthony said the ministry's stance committed to implementing the UN political declaration on TB to work towards universal access to quality prevention, diagnosis and treatment and care of tuberculosis. Luan Williams for MTV's News Update. You're watching MTV's News Update. More news on the other side of the break. Stay with us. Region pain from the U.S. 
a brand that's recognized worldwide. Special wholesale prices starting at 3400 for the emulsion and 3800 for the oil. Four gallons bucket for just $12,000. Also, the royal paints were crafted for people with a budget. Special introductory price on the semi-gloss top coat for just $1,500 per gallon and the roof and floor paint for just $5,500 for 1.5 gallons. Come and visit our showroom at Lot 140B Quamina Street or call telephone 6220601 or 504-3908 for more information. Grab onto these special prices with 30 shades and more to choose from while stocks last. Let's paint Guyana, everybody. You can be a millionaire by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26, or you can buy a quick pick for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily Monday through Saturday to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. Are you building or renovating your home? Then come to Beeson for a wide range of aluminum and UPVC windows and doors. Get from single hung sash, on it, casement, sliding windows, plus sliding and swinging doors. All our products can be customized and fitted with insect screens and are sealed tight to withstand harsh weather conditions. At Beeson, we also carry commercial, glass and French doors, showcases, aluminum louvers, curtain walls, aluminum rails, plus sliding and frameless shower doors. So look no further. Visit our showroom today at La 1228 Echoes Industrial Site or call 622 4197 or 623 4197. Peace on windows and doors. Filled with pride in Guyana by Guyanese. This is MTV's News Update. Welcome back. Seven Guyanese engineers are currently in Singapore where they will be receiving hands on training in construction on the Prosperity FPSO vessel. Here's Luan Williams. Seven graduate engineers hired by SBM Offshore on Monday arrived in Singapore for hands-on training in construction on the Prosperity FPSO vessel. This vessel is being constructed to support the pyro developments in the Starbrook Block Offshore, Guyana. These persons were recruited from the University of Guyana in 2021 after undergoing a vetting process. In August of 2021, these engineers traveled to the Netherlands, where they spent six months undergoing training in different areas, while also working along with the team designing the vessel. The graduate engineers returned to Guyana in February before the final stint of training in Singapore. So while in Netherlands, we were placed into different departments. We worked with engineers in like drawings and so on. And when we go to Singapore now, it will be more construction, I say, like, fine, um, red lining, drawings, and so on. So, like, design and construction. Meanwhile, Kishan Lal, another engineer, said he is excited about this opportunity. Well, be, um, I'm going to Singapore. I'm very excited because that's where the real excitement is, the real peak, the real purpose of the job, I would say, the construction aspect of it. And being a civil engineer by profession, it will definitely pique my interest to see how all these large modules are being constructed, different processes that a company like SBM would use and utilize on an international scale compared to what we have here in Guyana, and to learn about the different cultures there as well, meeting people from different parts of the world. So yeah, I'm definitely excited about Singapore. The other graduate engineers are Malik Lewis, Raymond Luku, Paula Serres, Daniel Trower, and Andy Staten. According to a press statement from SBM Offshore, it intends to repeat the program given how well it has been going and the clear benefits being derived. When the 18-month program is completed, these graduates will be fully involved in SBM Guyana operations in roles that they are interested in, which fit their background and areas of training. Luan Williams for MTV's News Update. The Women in Business Expo was launched on Thursday at the Pegasus Hotel, which is aimed at giving women a platform to showcase their businesses, products and services. More from Rihanna Griffith. 
The Women in Business Expo will be returning in person after two years and is being held at the Pegasus Hotel. The expo will run from March 30th and 31st in keeping with the theme for International Women's Day, Break the Bias. Some 50 women would be given the platform to showcase what their businesses have to offer. This is according to Sonia Noel, the host of the expo. This platform is definitely going to be providing for the livelihood of so many families. Now that woman, they all have families. This year, the expo will also include a virtual platform. This is in collaboration with Women in Business International. We, our presence there is going to be in a booth and all of the exhibitors will be part of that booth. Customers can come and chat with them, see what they the exposition will also see the launch of a new line of art. The aim of this expo is to provide personal development for many women by providing a platform for a variety of businesses. It surrounds strength, confidence and intelligence while empowering women who are committed to the task of creating a more progressive society. The expo is open to the public and admission is free. Rihanna Griffith for MTV's News Update. More news coming up after the break. What is fiber? Think exceptional. GTT Fiber is an advanced high-speed internet product that delivers broadband by fiber optic cables with download speeds of up to 150 megabits per second. It means your internet is faster. And GTT Fiber comes with the added coverage of our Plume HomePass Wi-Fi system. Plume extends your Wi-Fi signal to ensure that you have the best experience in every corner of your home with Wi-Fi everywhere. Upgrade to GTT fiber today and don't get left behind tomorrow. happens your septic tank is full all the waste from your toilet goes into your septic tank through the sewage line when your tank is full the two most common indicators are an overflowing tank and an overflowing toilet it is recommended that Sivan's waste management empty your septic tank every two to three years to avoid any embarrassment and before you can say shh it's gone Call Sivan's Waste Management today at 218-1455 or 218-1156. Are you running around looking for construction materials? Well, run down to Lens for affordable, high-quality building supplies. We have the widest range of grade A floor and wall tiles in any shape, size, and designs. And all types of ceramics, porcelain glazed, and full body porcelain. We stock the largest collection of large format tiles. Check out our porcelain slabs as big as 10 feet by four and a half feet. Add a bit of elegance with our large range of decorative molding. Our line of PPG paints will give you vibrant colors that won't fade. With our wall and ceiling gypsum system, it's light, durable, and fast. So come down to Lens at 136 Cherry Street, which is next to Buddy's and Pizza Hut, for that 31 years of Lens quality. You're tuned to MTV's News Update. For two days, the citizens will have the opportunity to gain knowledge on the new and developing technologies with the launch of the Tech Expo. This expo is being facilitated by the Ministry of Education and will last for two days. More in this report. 
The Ministry of Education Initiative Tech Expo was launched on Thursday at the National Center of Educational Resources Development's NSERT Auditorium and will close tomorrow, March 25th. This expo is being held under the team Enhancing Traditional and Non-Traditional Technology. The aim of this expo is to bring awareness to locals about new and prevailing technologies and how they can be used for advancement. This is according to Chief Education Officer Dr. Marcel Hudson. Technology is a contributory factor to globalization and digital transformation. If we want to experience what the developed world is experiencing, it is important that we get with the program. He also urged persons visiting the exhibition sites to utilize the knowledge of these technologies to be innovators and creators. Start thinking big how you could be a, a contributory, how you could contribute to the development of, of your nation and by extension the world. Meanwhile, head of the Management and Information System Unit at the Ministry, Yoganan Indar Singh, posited that it is important to keep up to date with technology as there are a number of career opportunities in this field. To embrace energy, to become energy independent, to become energy diverse, and also to be energy sustainable. So we're talking about various ranges of technology there, solar, wind, gas, manufacturing, infrastructure technology, agriculture and mining technology. Heavy emphasis will also be placed on the development of science, technology, engineering and mathematics STEM in schools. We need to bring into our classroom real world examples, real world applications and appreciation of how scientific discoveries and inventions can play a role in addressing our current needs to be able to create and adapt technologies. In the meanwhile, the education team is encouraging everyone to embrace technology despite what generation they've come from. Rihanna Griffith for MTV's News Update. Patients who have been diagnosed with end-stage renal failure can register now for the government's dialysis support program. This program could allow a patient to get $600,000 yearly for dialysis treatment. Here are the details. Senior Minister in the Office of the President with Responsibility for Finance, Dr. Ashni Singh, in the National 2022 Budget had announced the introduction of the Dialysis Support Program. This program will allow the government to finance up to $600,000 per annum worth of dialysis treatment for each and every dialysis patient in Guyana. There are currently hundreds of persons undergoing dialysis treatment, but sometimes are not able to meet the cost of their treatment. Dialysis costs between $12,000 to $15,000 per session, and patients must have it done two to three times a week. Registration is now open for hemodialysis patients to register for the $600,000 assistance from the government. Patients who are diagnosed with end-stage renal failure are eligible for financial support yearly. According to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, kidney failure treated with dialysis or kidney transplant is called end-stage renal disease, ESRD. They must present a valid form of identification and a medical report to support dialysis. If anyone has questions, they can call the Medical Treatment Department of the Ministry of Health for more information. Dr. Singh had stated that this program will provide much-needed assistance to almost 300 persons at a cost of 100 80 million dollars. Luan Williams for MTV's News Update. Here is the ninth score rung now. who were busted with $1.7 million worth in marijuana at New Diamond Housing Scheme, East Bank Demerara, were today remanded to prison. 
47-year-old Ray Anthony Prasad, called Tony, and 42-year-old Andrew Carew, called Dado, were hauled before Magistrate Sunil Skars at the Diamond Golden Grove Magistrate's Court and denied the charges. First charge stated that on March 22, 2022, at New Diamond Housing Scheme, East Bank Demerara, Prasad had 5.754 kilograms of marijuana in his possession for the purpose of trafficking. Further, a second charge stated that on the same day and at the same location, Karu supplied Prasad with a quantity of marijuana for the purpose of trafficking. The last charge stated that on the same day at the same location, Karu had 530 grams of marijuana in his possession for the purpose of trafficking. The magistrate remanded the duo until May 12, 2022, when they are expected to make another court appearance. Acting on information received, ranks of the Customs Anti-Narcotic Unit, KANU, conducted an operation during which they observed Prasad sitting in a car that was parked in front of his home in New Diamond Housing Scheme. Prasad then exited his car and went to another vehicle that Karu reportedly drove. He allegedly collected six parcels from Karu before going into his house. Shortly after, the ranks went into the home and six parcels of marijuana were unearthed. The men were then escorted to Kanu headquarters with the illicit drug, which, when weighed in their presence, amounted to 5.754 kilograms. According to Kanu, the marijuana has an estimated street value of $1.7 million. In another matter, 19-year-old Matthew Ambekdar was slapped with three counts of dangerous driving earlier this month, was released on $1.5 million bail after making another court appearance. Ambekdar of Tushan Housing Scheme, East Bank Esiquibo, was remanded to prison after being hauled before Magistrate Sipal Ali at the Leonora Magistrate's Court. He was not required to plead to the charges, which stated that on March 7, 2022, he drove a motor car in a manner dangerous to the public, thereby causing the deaths of Carlito Gobin Lal, 23, Ayub Mohammed, 44, and Kairam Rampasad, 41. However, during today's court proceeding, the charges were reread to him after the Administration of Justice Act, AJA, and he pleaded not guilty. As such, he was granted bail in the sum of $500,000 on each of the charges, with the condition that he lodge his passport. He is scheduled to make another court appearance on April 26, 2022. Attorneys at law Dexter Todd and Dexter Smart represented the accused. Reports are that at about 2,200 hours on the day in question, the teen was reportedly racing along the DeWillem Public Road when he plowed into three persons at the Sharmila Harikisun Sports Bar. Police reported that no alcohol was detected in the teen's breath after a breathalyzer test. Finally, three men who were charged in 2020 with the murder of Canadian citizen Nicholas Jaipal were today committed to stand trial at the High Court in Burbies by Magistrate Alex Moore. Charan Sudan, also known as Vicky, Asim Gushif Gobin, also known as Blackie, and Munasar Bihari, also known as Burkhead, was before the Springlands Magistrates Court, where the preliminary inquiry was conducted for the offense, which alleged that between August 16th and 20th at Molson Creek, they murdered Jai Paul. Today, Magistrate Moore ruled that based on the evidence, a sufficient case was made out against the trio for them to stand trial at the next practical sitting of the Demerara Assises. The charred remains of Jai Paul were found on August 20th at Molson Creek, quarantine Burpees, a few days after he was reported missing by his grandfather with whom he was staying. Reports are that the young man was abducted, strangled to death, and his body burnt with truck tires. Jaipal had arrived in Guyana in March 2020 and was slated to return home in May of that year, but was unable to do so due to the closure of the borders amid the COVID-19 pandemic. He stayed with his 86-year-old grandfather, Ramkisun Jaipal. The pensioner reported that the last time he saw his grandson was just before he retired to bed on the evening of August 16th. This was during the countrywide power outage. The elderly man explained that he got out of bed and lit two lamps, one of which he gave his grandson and he returned to bed. Upon waking up the following day, he realized that his grandson was missing. The elderly man revealed that he received a telephone call that morning where the caller claimed that he had kidnapped his grandson and was demanding a ransom of $50 million. Reports indicate that the young man was murdered as revenge against his grandfather concerning a court matter over rice lands. 
for MTV's Court Roundup, Jessica Calendar. <laughs> Take a look at tips for healthy living brought to you with the kind compliments of W's Variety. Boss, I get you a minute. Follow court, follow court. This is the long milk pie. Ah, oh, boss. I Confucius say milk is the key to health and power. Boss, milk is milk, man. <laughs> Natura milk is the best milk on the market. Okay. Natura, Natura. Natura! Natura! Yeah! Bring the slim and healthy! Slim and healthy! And the full cream! Holy cream! Holy cream! Natura milk powder is a better milk! Top 10 medical causes of death in Guyana Self harm. While self harm isn't necessarily a medical cause of death, it is among one of the top 10 causes of death in Guyana and can cause health complications. So before we find out what the number one medical cause of death is, let's look at self-harm. What is self-harm? Self-harm, also known as self-injury, self-inflicted violence, and non-suicidal self-injury. It is the deliberate act of causing physical harm to oneself. While cutting can often appear to be a sign of attempted suicide, most children and teens who engage in self-injury are not actively suicidal. Unfortunately, there is always a risk of death involved in self-injurious behaviors, as the person may cut too deeply or hurt themselves beyond the point of which their body is capable of repairing the damage. As self-harming behaviors can become unintentionally fatal, any parent or guardian concerned for their child or teen should seek treatment immediately to prevent any complications and promote more positive outcomes. Signs and Symptoms As self-injury is often done in private, it can be challenging to know when a loved one or friend is engaging in self-harming behaviors. The signs and symptoms of self-injury will vary depending upon the methods a person uses, co-occurring disorders and drug or alcohol use. Signs and symptoms of self-injury include behavioral symptoms, such as the need to spend increasing amounts of time alone, challenges in friendships and romantic relationships, physical symptoms, scars from burns or cuts, fresh scratches or cuts, broken bones, cognitive symptoms, ongoing questions about personal identity, thoughts of helplessness, hopelessness, or worthlessness, Psychosocial symptoms, emotional instability, depression, guilt, shame, and disgust. Causes Researchers in the field believe that self-injurious behaviors are not the result of one single factor, but rather a number of causes and risk factors working together. The most common causes of self-injury may include a combination of the following. Genetic, a number of mental illnesses that can trigger self-harming impulses. Physical. Many mental health disorders are thought to be the result of imbalances in certain neurotransmitters in the brain, involved in emotional regulation and feelings of pleasure. These people may self-harm as a means to feel less empty or to control their emotions. Environmental. Children and teens who have been abused physically, sexually, verbally, or emotionally are at a greater risk for developing self-injurious behaviors as a means to cope. During the abuse, these people were unable to express emotions and feelings in a healthy manner and learned to use self-injury to cope with the overwhelming emotions of the trauma. Treatment There is no one best way to treat self-injuring behavior, but the first step is to tell someone so you can get help. Treatment is based on your specific issues and any related mental health disorders you might have, such as depression. Because self-injury can become a major part of your life, it's best to get treatment from a mental health professional experienced in self-injury issues. Some treatment options can include therapy, medications, and psychiatric hospitalization. 
Treating self-injury behavior can take time, hard work, and your own desire to recover. This is the long milk point. Ah, boss! I confuse I say milk is the key to health and power. Boss, milk is milk, man. <laughs> Natura milk is the best milk on the market. Yeah. Natura, Natura. Natura? Natura? Yeah. Bring the slim and healthy. Slim and healthy. And the full cream. Holy cream, holy cream. Natura milk powder is a better milk. ISG and MTV's Sport Update with Jessica Canada comes up after the break. Stay tuned. Bison Windows and Doors is having a big New Year sale. Hurry now and save on aluminum sash windows with insect repellent. Going only for $14,900. VAT inclusive. Available in black or white frames. Tinted or reflective glass. Also at Bison's. Buy 10 windows and get one bathroom window absolutely free. Offer available while stocks last. So hurry to Bison Windows and Doors. Lot 1228 Echoes Industrial Site and save. The Central Housing and Planning Authority is kindly asking residents living in communities under the management of the department to desist from storing construction materials on roadways and road shoulders. Residents are also being asked not to block roadways or drains with construction materials. According to clauses 12 and 13 of the amended agreement of sale of restrictive covenants attached to titles issued from 2012, no storage of materials comprising earth, sand, stone, blocks, cements, timber and steel or mixing of concrete shall be permitted on the road or the road shoulders. Any materials on the road or the road shoulders must be cleared within 24 hours of being placed thereon. Residents are reminded that failure to adhere to clauses 12 and 13 will result in a penalty of $10,000 being charged per day of default. A message from the Central Housing and Planning Authority. Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens available in tinted or clear complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals. FiberTech materials are used in a multitude of ways from repairing and fabrication of auto body, fishing and household items. We have available various fiberglass mattings, resin, mold releases, brushes and rollers for all of your repair needs. We offer technical advice and free training to ensure you get the job done. For further information, call us at 2206907 or 2209192. Over the years, ISG has been providing all sectors across Guyana with quality products and outstanding customer service. Proud distributor of NP and Ultra lubricants, engineered for tropical conditions. International trucks and parts, leading the change. SEM machinery, a Caterpillar brand, SKF bearings and mounted products, NAPA batteries, Tide power generators, discover the greatest source of power. Industrial Supply of Guyana Inc., the best opportunity to make the right choice. The Ghana Badminton Association is currently working towards expanding the sport to hinterland regions, which started last Sunday at St. Cuthbert Mission. Secretary of the Guyana Badminton Association, GBA Emilia Ramdani, and Vice President Ayana Watson introduced Air Badminton at St. Cuthbert's Mission on Sunday, March 24, 2022. Uh, badminton is, is a racket sport. It's the fastest racket sport. If you like to go on the internet, you just Google badminton and it will come up as being the fastest racket sport in the world. You might think it's table tennis or lawn tennis, which are more you, you might be more familiar with, but it's actually racket. 
Badminton. The association also donated about six shuttlecocks, six rackets, and two nets to the community. Air Badminton, developed by the Badminton World Federation, is designed to create opportunities for people of all ages and ability to play badminton on hard, grass and sand surfaces in parks, playgrounds and beaches across the world. There was an excellent turnout and acceptance of this new and exciting game to the community. Introduction of the sport to children between the ages of 8 to 18 and presentation of the equipment was done at the Bemichi Eco Lodge, who will also be in charge of administering the program in the community. Air Badminton was previously launched at the St. Rose's High School and the University of Guyana. The Guyana Badminton Association also plans to return to the community to launch the Shuttle Time project, where the indoor version of the game is taught in schools as an elective for the physical education CSEC examination. Jamaica's local organizing committee for the Carve the Games have revised their vaccination policy ahead of next month's event. Athletes, coaches, and support personnel arriving in Jamaica for next month's Carifta Games will no longer be required to show proof of vaccinations. This is according to SportsMax. However, in light of the shift in policy, the local organizing committee is encouraging everyone to adhere to the accepted safety measures. Notwithstanding the revised policy, the chairman of the local organizing committee, Mike Fennell, wants participants to appreciate that the virus has not gone anywhere. Fennell strongly recommends that athletes, coaches, and other support personnel, officials, representatives of the media, volunteers, and spectators continue social distancing and wearing masks. He further reminded that the COVID-19 virus is still with us, and due care and attention must be observed. The local organizing committee in Jamaica will continue to sanitize all relevant areas at the athletes' village and the warm-up and competition facilities at the national stadium. The committee also reminds international National participants and visitors that they must check the current policies for the conditions and protocols required by airlines for their respective countries' re-entry. So far, at least nine local athletes have qualified for the Games. More athletes are expected to qualify as the Athletics Association of Guyana does not submit its final list of representatives until April 1st. Jamaica is set to host this year's Games from April 16th to 18th after receiving their government's backing following the cancellation of the last two editions due to COVID-19. The 2020 event was scheduled to be held in Bermuda but was then postponed to 2021 before being cancelled as a result of the ongoing coronavirus-related concerns in that territory and worldwide. The West Indies women currently sit at third position with their ICC Women's World Cup future uncertain as South Africa secures their semi-final spot. Reinforce the abandonment of the West Indies Women Final Group League match at Basin Reserve against South Africa Women at the ICC Women's Cricket World Cup. Both teams earned one point each. With it, the West Indies women move on to third in the standings with seven points and now await the outcome of the South Africa-India match on March 27th. Should South Africa win, the West Indies will secure a semi-final berth. Should India win, then the West Indies will be eliminated. South Africa's bowling has been their principal asset throughout the tournament, as their leading batters, who did manage 38 not out against the Maroon Warriors, have struggled to perform in New Zealand. This result hauled South Africa up to 9 points and 2nd in the standings, and leaving West Indies hopes of progression hanging in the balance. South Africa's women have never won the ICC Women's Cricket World Cup trophy. West Indies women's all-rounder Deandra Dottin noted that the West Indies were well aware of how challenging the tournament would be going in. You know, the top four was um, was some hard, some tough teams, you know, but I think that we can still take a lot of positive from um, this first group stage. I mean, we've played um, good cricket, um, just that it's just certain stages when it comes to batting that some um we, we didn't put good runs on on the board but um i mean like i there's still a lot of positives to take from the first half
The weather had thrown Thursday's game into doubt, but after eventually taking to the field in a game cut to 27 overs, the West Indies got off to a thrilling start. Chanel Henry, 3 for 19, and Shamilia Connells, 1 for 18, blistering new ball spells reduced South Africa to 22 for 4 before Dupree's led the recovery with a battling 38 not out. West Indies now sit third, but know their semi final fate is out of their hands. Fretting on the fortunes of India and England, who can leapfrog them into the top four if if they win their final matches against South Africa and Bangladesh, respectively. It's not the results that we want, but is only we can only control what we can actually control at the time. Not knowing the outcome of today, but then we would have actually been on nine pounds. So, but. As I say, um, everything happens for a reason, so it's just to look forward and just take the positive from here. And there's still the, the tournament is still playing, so all loss isn't gone as yet. We tell you now that the British government has backed the parliamentary committee's recommendation to limit public funding for cricket unless the sport can demonstrate continuous progress in getting rid of racism. According to Reuters, the Digital Culture, Media and Sport Parliamentary Committee issued its report in January saying cricket must clean up its act or freeze cuts in funding. The committee had also called for quarterly reports and monitoring by indicators developed by the England and Wales Cricket Board, which the government has now endorsed. Japan have qualified for the World Cup for the seventh successive time after a 2-0 victory over Australia. Japan booked their place at this year's FIFA World Cup in Qatar with a dramatic victory against Australia that also confirmed Saudi Arabia's qualification for the tournament. Two late goals from substitute Karu Mitoma in Sydney sealed Japan's place in Qatar with a game to spare. Japan needed to beat Australia on home soil for the first time since 1998 to progress and appeared to be heading towards a frustrating draw against COVID-19 hit Aussie side. However, Matoma came off the bench to break the deadlock in the 90th minute. Matoma then put the result and qualification beyond doubt five minutes later when he skipped through the tiring Australia defence to score the second goal. This win took the Japan team to the top of Group B of Asian qualifying, above Saudi Arabia who are four points clear of Australia. Australia now face a playoff campaign to reach a fifth successive World Cup. They will next face Saudi Arabia in Jeddah on Tuesday, before going on to face the country that finishes third in Group A in a playoff game on 7th June. With two games to go, the United Arab Emirates are third in that group, three points ahead of Lebanon, while Iraq are a further point adrift. The winner of that tie goes on to a playoff against the fifth place team from South America. That brings us to the end of Sport Update, which was brought to you with the kind compliments of ISG. More after the break. Get the right seal right now from Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc., your immediate SKF sealing solutions. The SKF seal jet machine is capable of building seals from 5 millimeter to 600 millimeter in diameter in under five minutes. With technical support readily available, you can get a customized seal to suit virtually any industrial application, like buffer, rod, wiper, and piston seals. SKF seal jet machine, now at Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc. And that brings down the curtain on tonight's newscast, but before we go, here's a reminder of our top stories. Captain of the trawler that sank several weeks ago had a fake license. Seven Guyanese engineers currently receiving FPSO training in Singapore. 
Women in Business Expo returns in person after two years. And in sport, West Indies keep their women's World Cup hopes alive after washout against South Africa. Catch our broadcast tomorrow at 6 hours 30. Don't forget to like our Facebook page where the news can be viewed live at 19 hours 30. On behalf of our news and technical teams, Sandy Ramutar saying stay safe and goodbye for now.